Welcome, you're listening to Ask the Doulas, a podcast where we talk to experts from all over the country about topics related to pregnancy, birth, postpartum, and early parenting. Let's chat. Hi, Amber. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're talking to Amber Shaw today. She's a past and current client. And then you also just completed our very first beta launch of the Becoming a Mother course. I did. So we kind of want to talk to that. And Kristen's here with us too today. So, um, you know, as you know, she teaches the first three weeks on pregnancy and birth. And then I teach the last three weeks on postpartum planning and sleep. Um, so we just kind of wanted to get firsthand experience for other people who might be thinking other moms who might be thinking about taking this course, Mm -hmm. Um, maybe ask you some things about, you know, what you got out of it. So Kristen, do you have any questions to start it off? Yeah. So Amber, I would love to, I know when we approached you about the concept, I would love to hear your thoughts on, you know, why being a second time mom, you decided to invest six plus weeks um, during your busy life and pregnancy to join us in this brand new online course? Well, I feel like you kind of black out a little bit. Um, After your first child, you know, I got um, pregnant again. My son is almost four. And I feel like there was a lot that I just didn't remember about, you know, when he was, you know, a newborn, particularly. Um, I think your mind kind of, you know, forgets some things to protect you a little bit and make sure that, you know, you have the opportunity to have a second. So, right. um, you know, for, and there's so much, you know, new information out constantly and just a million different places to get it. But I think that in general can be overwhelming um, to a new mom or even a second mom, second time mom. So, um, you know, I love you guys. I use you, you know, for my first birth. So it was kind of a no brainer to, you know, work with you again um, and just kind of get a a brush up of everything. And I got a lot of new information out of it too. So it was nice just to kind of have everything in one space from trusted sources um, that, you know, I can reach out to if I need to. It's not just like, you know, you're getting information and then like, that's it, go run with it. So um, yeah, I, I like the whole concept of it. And just like the fact that, you know, you guys are available for questions too. So, and even with working with doulas currently, have you found that it's still beneficial to get that information from, you know, Alyssa and myself in different areas that maybe your doulas um, may not be talking to you about on the regular? Absolutely. Um, I love my doulas a lot, but I I don't want to reach out to them for every little question I have. I don't want to ask them about you know, safe sleep and kind of, um, you know, brushing up on that stuff. So I think there's just some things that, you know, you kind of want to do research on your own time about, um, I kind of save my text for the doulas, especially at this point to like, Hey, is this sensation normal? Not asking them about, um, you know, breastfeeding and, you know, all of that stuff. So it's kind of just a, it's a different type of, um, like a different type of information area, I guess you could say. Sure. And added on to that, I think, you know, so you have a four-year-old and now you're pregnant again, but even if you would have remembered all the things you've never birthed during COVID before. So I think that's a a huge part of, you know, and until COVID goes away, which who who knows how long we're going to have, you know, parents and mothers in particular, really nervous about giving birth during a pandemic. Um, Yeah. You know, that, that is a big piece of, you know, what your first or second week, probably your first week you go over that? Yeah. Well, we go over, you know, just pregnancy expectations and fears and feelings. And I think it applies no matter what stage of pregnancy a woman is at. Obviously with anything, it's better to join a course like becoming early in pregnancy. But we have had clients deliver their babies like shortly after the class started and they still got benefit and are interacting and have lifetime access to the videos if they have more children? Well, I think the good part about it is how you guys break it up so much. Like it's easy to go in and find the information that you're looking for. 
um, which I think is really nice. You don't have to like watch like a whole video to kind of like, you know, if you remember what section something is in that you want to like brush up on or needed more information about, you can go right there. Um, I loved that about it. And it, I think it really broadly covers like, yeah, you're pregnant, you know, now what do you do? You're faced with all these like questions and decisions, but like now the baby's here. So it's kind of like both ends of it, you know, which I think for my first time around um, being pregnant, I focused so much on preparing for birth that I don't think that I prepared enough for postpartum and like what really happens like when you're bringing the baby home. And that I think that probably happens to a lot of people because you're just like so, you know, angsty about the day and just like thinking so much about the day of your birth. But like, that's just the beginning of it. <laughs> you know, right. that's so true. Yeah, there's like so much that happens after that you're constantly like, is this normal? Um, You know, what do I do if this arises? And, you know, you can't constantly be calling your pediatrician or, or, you know, well, for me, it was just the pediatricians because I didn't have like the postpartum doula. So I think that like really having solid information and resources for like when baby comes home is so important and something I wish I would have spent more time on my first time around. So yeah, you're not the only one. <laughs> right. A lot of parents say that, like, oh my gosh. Yeah. We read all the books. Well, you're so that's the exciting part, right? Like you find yeah. out you're pregnant, you're so excited, and your brain can't even go there yet. Like no. you're so focused on a healthy pregnancy. Yeah. And then you get to the oh my gosh, what is like labor and delivery gonna be like? Ah. And then yeah. you never even get past that. Like once you bring the baby home, then what? And that's that's the hard part, right? It really is the hard part. Like it, it, you're so, it's so overwhelming. And especially like your first time around, like I just questioned, I questioned every mark on his body. I questioned if like, you know, his baby acne, what it really was like, just, you know, if I had enough supply, like, is he even getting anything out of me? Like, it's just, oh God, it's a really intense time. So I think the fact that you guys have like so much content focused on that and also, resources um that that is huge especially like second time around I really I think focused on like those because when I started the class like I already had my doulas and everything like that and I knew that I wanted you know a vaginal birth like a v-back so I kind of had a good idea of like you know my care team all of that stuff so I really um really focused on like the second half of the course and just like the bonus videos and like being active in the Facebook group and, and stuff like that. That's been really beneficial to me. Yeah. Let's talk a little more about the Facebook group. Cause that was a big part of um, when we put this class together, like, especially again, during a pandemic when pregnant moms can't get together and have that um, community, to yeah. have like a really safe and open space where you can ask these questions that you might not feel comfortable asking in a big open Facebook moms group with thousands yeah. of people right. in it yeah. and to know that you're going to get, um, you know, support and answers and then responses from Kristen and I that are like, Hey, here's what the evidence says, or Hey, here's a trusted resource in our area or your area who um, can support you. I think that's invaluable. There is too much. There's too much out there. It's overwhelming. You don't always know, um, you know, if you're reading somebody's opinion or if it's evidence-based, everybody has has an opinion about everything when it comes to parenting and motherhood. And um, it, it's really like, you got to really sift through all of that stuff and find just like clarity especially when you are like postpartum and already emotional. Like I remember coming across so many resources when I was like up in the middle of the night questioning things that just like sent me down an even worse rabbit hole of like thinking I was doing something wrong or making me even more paranoid. So it's like to just like have a couple places that you go to for where you just, yeah, you know that you're going to get a reliable answer. That's like evidence-based from somebody that, you know, is just, it's, it's invaluable. Like I said. Well, good. That's what we wanted. And you've all like, helped us shape the course based on feedback from the live Q and a calls and in the group. So we added an expert um, video on car seat installation. We had the author of Welcome to Fatherhood, do one for dads specifically, since dads are not um, in the group. 
dads and partners, I should say. Mm -hmm. Um, So to have something that they can look at and get involved in the uh, pregnancy birth and parenting aspect of things. Yeah, we were very yep. intentional about not having, we've, all of our, cla- like, literally all of our other classes are for couples. Yes. Um, and we think that's really important and we love it. But uh-huh. then it's like, I think mothers wouldn't be so open about asking this, you know, specific kinds of questions or talking about, you know, yeah. especially in the postpartum one, we talk about some, you know, the nitty gritty, like what happens to a female body afterwards and like, yeah. Well, partners or, you know, males aren't going to want to either listen to that or hear about right. it. And we're not going to want to talk about it in front of them. Like as much as I love my husband, I'm not going to tell him about what happens to my body every month. Right. <laughs> right. Period. You right. know, so yeah, I just, I, we were very intentional in that too, of like, let's just make this only for mothers, like not living persons only and let them feel really safe and comfortable here. Hey, Alyssa here. I'm just popping in to tell you about our course called Becoming. Becoming a mother is your guide to a confident pregnancy and birth, all in a convenient six-week online program. From birth plans to sleep training and everything in between, you'll gain the confidence and skills you need for a smooth transition to motherhood. You'll get live coaching calls with Kristen and myself, a bunch of expert videos, including chiropractic care, pelvic floor physical therapy, mental health experts, breastfeeding, and much more. You'll also get a private Facebook community with other mothers going through this at the same time as you to offer support and encouragement when you need it most. And then of course, you'll also have direct email access to me and Kristen, in addition to the live coaching calls. If you'd like to learn more about the course, you can email us at info at goldcoastdoulas.com or check it out at thebecomingcourse.com. We'd love to see you there. I was actually just watching that one the other day because I um, had a cesarean with my first birth. So in a, in a way, I feel like this is my first birth mm-hmm. in a way. Because I have not experienced, you know, any type of labor at all. I haven't experienced postpartum with like a vaginal birth. Mm -hmm. And that was really like great to just like hear about all of that stuff. um, Because it's going to be my first time experiencing it, even though I've had like a baby before. So, you know, no matter what birth you're on, they're all different. And I think this information is always just good to have as like a reminder, you know, even if like somebody has had a vaginal birth before, like just the reminders of like prepping yourself to like, this is what's going to, you know, be happening because, you know, to not know, um, yeah, the more, you know, the better you can go in and just be like mentally prepared for like whatever happens. And then I know you were very interested in the sleep aspect of things. So this is love. And that live call was quite well attended. Yeah. I mean, every time I talk about sleep, I remind myself I need to create a class specifically for sleep. And actually from this beta group, and I'm almost done writing it, like I feel like it would be great because you all are pregnant around the same time. You're going to have children in the like three to six month age range around the same time. Yeah. Like, this group of women who go through the course together could then if they wanted like go through this sleep class, you know, like it'd be like four different sessions for four different age groups or something. Like I'm trying to work through how that would be. Yeah. Then you could like commiserate together of like, Oh my gosh, well, this is how naps are going. But then I could be there to be like, okay, based on what you told me, here's what you all need to do. Um, so I'm working through that in my head. Cause I know sleep is a really big issue for parents. Yes. Whether first time or like you, you know, with a toddler, I guess he's older than a toddler at this point, but a lot of people with like a one and two year old at home, that's really, especially they're not sleeping well yet. Yeah. I'm actually way more concerned about sleep this time around because I have another kid like for the first time. It's like, you know, you really can nap when they nap and like, you know, doing all of that stuff. And luckily Parker has always been a really good sleeper. Um, but man, I feel like, like my second time around, like I, I want to work harder at getting, you know, um, getting to know his sleep schedule, like working on that because it's just, I just don't have the flexibility to, 
you know, just be like focused on him and to be sleep deprived all the time. So that would be so beneficial and so helpful. I feel like for people, cause I didn't do any type of sleep t- training the first time around at all. So yeah, got lucky with a kid who liked to sleep. I did. Yeah. Yeah. And this one, who knows, maybe the second one will too, but ah, we'll see. He's, yeah, very, my- he's very active at night already. So <laughs> Well, my intention with week six with sleep was just to give everyone enough info that you go, oh my gosh, I can do this. It's not Mm -hmm. scary. I can start from the beginning creating these really healthy sleep habits so that when my baby is ready, it's not such a problem. Right. And then no. And two, I think remembering that just the beginning, like there is no, you're just kind of at the whim of the breastfeeding and you are up all the time and like, you can't even look for those patterns yet. So even just like, for the reminder of that, because I think you kind of remember, or you forget about like that time as well. Um, just cause it's all a blur, like night is day, day is night. It's like, it's a very strange time. So, you know, like even just being ready to like jump back into that and setting yourself up for support. Um, I think that like, I've had a lot more conversations with Ashton, you know, this time around and like, you know, this is what we're about to like be in again. And, you know, we have another kid. So, you know, I'm fine, like getting up obviously like all night long, but you know, you're going to need to step in a little bit more, you know, in the, in the, you know, morning hours with Parker and just like, you know, letting me nap throughout the day. So I feel like like good conversations have happened, you know, with Ashton and I more than they did the first time around too, just like based on some of these classes and just, you know, the reminders and like, you know, having, having those talks now and not later when it's like more emotional because <laughs> you're just like exhausted and just trying to survive. <laughs> so I'm sure we communicate that both in my section in your planning and then also in the postpartum section is communication is key and setting yeah. your, especially with your partner, but also with family and what their expectations are. Yeah. Once again, something I did not like really focus on the first time around, but I am now. So (laughs) we're so glad you took the course and that you enjoyed it. Um, Yeah. And as you know, I mean, this course is just going to keep growing and evolving. And as videos change and who knows, baby number three comes, you're still going to have access to all this stuff so we can keep Mm -hmm. reminding you. And if you want to stay in the Facebook group, you can, if you want to get out, we don't we won't be offended. <laughs> yeah. And we've had some great conversations in the group. I've loved seeing, you know, birth stories get shared as people are having their babies and yeah. It's great to do some sort of a virtual reunion in the group. And it's, it's nice too, that everybody, you know, pretty much in there at this point is local as well. So, you know, it would be great to kind of form some like play groups from it, or just, you know, actually meeting each other at some point, since we are coming to some kind of normalcy in the world. So actually having like a mom group, you know, I'm obviously part of a few of them on Facebook. I've got a love hate with like all of them. I kind of just use them when I need them and don't scroll and don't get into like anything in there. But, you know, having, having women like local in your area um, that you can reach out to and, you know, possibly like create relationships with is really awesome too. Yeah. We have a few students from other States and one from Southeast Michigan, but you're right. The majority in this one are local. So it is cool to have that connection. Yeah. As the course grows, it will, yeah. Yeah. Wider and wider reach. But I think, yeah, that's maybe an advantage you have with this beta courses. Maybe you reach out to some of these moms and say, Hey, you know, now that the weather's nice, let's, plan a meetup like let's meet babies yeah so what advice do you have Amber for um women who are on the fence about investing the time and money into an online program um and if they're deciding or even looking at their budget as we go through kind of your budgeting and your goals and we do like why would you say this would be important um in someone's pregnancy and um newborn journey Well, um, I think just like with anything, um, being prepared is just the best way that you can set yourself up for success. Um, and you know, as a first time mom, I wish I would have had something like this. I did have doulas, so I did have support, but you know, even with women that like don't bring doulas on, um, 
you know, just to have a place that, that kind of gives you like a roadmap of like some kind of, you know, plan to have people to, you know, reach out to like a place to start, um, is super important because it's all just like, a, it's a very overwhelming experience, especially for a first time mom. Um, and especially, you know, during the pandemic, cause a lot of, you know, in-person classes really aren't happening anymore. Um, maybe they're starting to now, but I think just having one place, um, to be able to get like all of your questions answered. And that kind of like touches on everything is just, you know, it's, it's a huge investment in yourself and your family and, you know, the, just the future of your sanity and how, how things are going to go and just kind of having an idea of what to expect. Um, I think is really important getting into this because there's a lot of unknowns, even if you have done all the research. So um, it's absolutely worth it. And it's nice because you can just do it on your own time too. You know, it's not like you have to, you know, show up to a physical class every week because I did the hypno breathing the first time around. Um, actually I did like quite a few classes through you guys, but yeah. this is nice because you can just kind of sit in bed at night and watch as much as you want to. So it's really flexible too. So I really love that about it as well. Well, and again, when you took hypno birthing, you were pregnant with no other children. So you could yeah. you know, basically, exactly. you know, your schedule was your own, but now it might be really hard to get away with a yeah. birth as much as we would want to get away <laughs> every week and have something to do. Um, it's just not, not feasible, <laughs> not feasible all the time. So, yeah. And that's why we got the videos into short content. So you could watch one video on a particular topic rather than doing a longer 30 minute to an hour long video. Yeah. Digest the information at your own pace and, you know, access it whenever you need it. Some women, you know, got into, the first couple of weeks quickly and then had things going on with spring break and so on and took some time to get back into it. So that self-paced aspect, but being able to get on calls, whether live or ask questions um, after watching the recording, I think has been very helpful for the group to be able to, you know, look through it and then ask questions directly versus a self-paced course that you don't have the interaction component that we do in becoming um well, and so many things come up during pregnancy. Um, you know, it, yeah, it, it's so important just to have that, that connection with people where you can ask those questions. Um, that's super important. And I think something else I wanted to say too, that I really liked about it is I feel like all of the, um, the classes go over things and then you have resources on top of that. So it's like, you know, you have like the breastfeeding class and then you have like, you know, a lactation consultant that you guys work with. So I think everything is paired really well too. So it's not just like, you know, a little bit of something and then like, you got to figure the rest of it out. It's like you, you have all of the resources in one place too. And so, you know, people don't have to go looking for that stuff after they, you know, if they have more questions or need more like clarification or support on something, like it's right there. So that's also like, a huge added value. Yeah, I feel like we we tried to do that and we probably, I mean, we, as doulas, that's part of what we do too, right? Like we offer support, but then also accompany that with resources because we know that the two go hand in hand. So I think either intentionally or unintentionally, it just happened in this course because that's how we live and breathe, right? right. Like we, we want to support you in the best way we can, but we know we can't do everything. So, and then, like you said, there's way too many places to get information. So let, we've already done it. We do it all the time, you know, for our clients, um, just put it in one place so that it's easy for you because to take one thing off of a busy mom's plate. Oh um, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Worth its weight in gold. <laughs> for sure. Awesome. Well, thanks for taking the time to do this. Thank you guys. I loved it. I feel definitely much more prepared second time around, especially for the breastfeeding, the, you know, sleeping and just postpartum stuff in general. I, that was huge for me. So yeah, it was, it was great. Good. Glad to hear it. Thanks so much, Amber. We appreciate it. Thank you guys. Thanks for listening to Ask the Doulas. For more information about Gold Coast Doulas, visit us on our website, goldcoastdoulas.com. We're also on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and give us a five-star review. Thank you. 
Remember, these moments are golden.